I greet you this day in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ as I welcome you to St. James's for this wonderful celebration of holy baptism this morning. Our service begins with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God, all us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. I'll sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines, and with dancing, and Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be We will read Psalm 114 responsibly by half verse. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, Judah became God's sanctuary. The sea beheld it and fled. The mountains skipped like rams. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? You mountains, that you skipped like rams. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sinned against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And then he began the reckoning. And one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. And so the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. And then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. He went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. And when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. And then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, the Lord handed over him to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. And so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you who, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Go micro. Go micro. That's the advice of our parish retreat speaker, Jerusalem Greer talking about how Christians should respond to our current events, the world around us, the macro environment. She says, go micro. By gathering around tables, she says, dinner tables, picnic tables, Eucharistic tables. And we're going to do that today by talking about fonts and forgiveness. Today, Peter asks Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother? Peter's question rises, we can see, from a place of perhaps self-righteousness, as if Peter had not done anyone wrong. Jesus' response to him is, not so fast. Jesus reminds Peter that he does, in fact, do wrong, that Peter has no place to be self-righteous, that we all receive forgiveness from God. So, how many times? 
Seven? Seven makes sense. It's a divine number, meaning wholeness, completeness. But Jesus says, not seven, but seventy-seven. Or, as one translation says, seventy times seven. Multiplying seven times seventy, Jesus doesn't mean four hundred ninety. Jesus means an unlimited amount, unlimited mercy and forgiveness. Jesus was drawing on the Jewish teaching that God's forgiveness and mercy have no limits. So neither should our forgiveness and mercy have limits. Leviticus in chapter 19 verse 18 says, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. God is the Lord. We toss around language like Jesus is Lord, God is Lord. Do we think about what that means? It means that everything about who we are and whose we are has direct impact on how we act and how we behave. God is Lord because God brought the Hebrew people, a ragtag group of nobodies, out of the great and powerful land of Egypt, out from under the power and rule of Pharaoh and his courts. And God showed in his story today that he's not just God over people, he's God over all creation and holding back the walls of water in the Red Sea. Pharaoh is not Lord. I am, says God. And we, accordingly, are not Pharaoh's people. We are God's people, citizens of God's kingdom. And accordingly, the first thing that people do after they get through the Red Sea is march straight through the wilderness to the holy mountain and receive God's law. A new law. The Ten Commandments summarize this law. And then Jesus boils it down further into two commandments that you and I can remember. First love God and then love each other. God is the one who plucks us out of danger, not so that we can live to ourselves, continuing to hurt ourselves and each other, but so that we can change and live lives devoted to God according to God's grace-giving law. But God's forgiveness, as free-flowing as it is, Jesus tells us today in his parable that God's forgiveness is also conditional. It depends on us too. If we are to receive God's forgiveness, we must forgive each other. That might not be easy, and in fact, in some cases, it may feel close to impossible, but with God, all things are, impos are possible because ultimately, the most important thing is our relationships our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. Paul literarily fleshes this out in 1 Corinthians 12 where he describes the church as the body of Christ. A beautiful, diverse body with many parts, all of which are important, all needed this is our humble reality. We need each other. We depend on each other. When one part of the body rejoices, all rejoice with it. And when one part of the body suffers, all suffer with it. Being doers of the word, in other words, is not just about doing mission projects, but it's about how we treat each other. St. James's, 
Richmonders, Americans, citizens of the world alike. Not with judgment or grudges or grumbling or bitterness, but with respect, with dignity, humility, forgiveness, and love. And ultimately, it all goes back to who we hold to be most important. God and the people around us, or ourselves, our fears, our angers, our hurts. Moreover, that forgiveness is coupled with humility, humility demanded of all of us. Do we have the humility to ask for forgiveness? To say, I'm sorry, or I apologize? I can say from personal experience, sometimes we have to pry those words out of our mouths with a crowbar. It can be painful to admit when we've done something wrong or have hurt someone, especially God, and especially when it is unintentional. But the epistle of St. James is, says, be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. Well, Michael Jackson perhaps said it best. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. Well, what does all this have to do with baptism? Looking around, I think we can all say we need a better world, a better St. James's, a better Richmond, a better global community. Baptism is about committing ourselves to God and to each other. And with each one of us, God changing us and us allowing God to change us dying to an old way of life, receiving Christ's forgiveness so that we can live to a new way in Christ. When we gaze into the waters of baptism in that font, we see Jesus is our mirror. Jesus, face to face with us, reveals what needs to change in us. But perhaps most importantly, baptism is a rite of hope. When the world is chaotic and we are divided, that font and that table are perhaps the most micro places we can go. The font and the table are places and promises of unity. They are also places of action. God's action on us, giving us action to go out into the world. And it shows that in a world of problems and disagreements, with God's help, we are not helpless. Caesar's cross is empty, and we are called to forgive and to be forgiven, to be healed and reborn in Christ's image so that we can live in newness of life. Two beautiful babies are being baptized today. Boy, we can hear them. <laughs> they are excited, and I'm excited too, because with them we recommit ourselves to God's vision of a better world starting with us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we are one. Whoa. Symbol of water, body and blood, the source of life, a gift of God's love, the power of faith, 
to burn The candle to light In Christ is confirmed We are one Oh, 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 oh We are one Oh, oh, oh We are one A child is destined down, down, we'll labor to teach a community vows in the name of the Father. The family awaits to baptize his infant. We're called into faith, we are one. Oh, oh, we are one. Trust and believe that life everlasting is ours to receive. We are, we are one. Oh, oh, we are one. Oh, oh, we are one. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Andrew Lewis to receive the sacrament of baptism. I present Christopher Silas to receive the sacrament of baptism. These next questions are addressed to our parents and sponsors. Will you be responsible for seeing the child you present as brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you by your prayers and your witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ. I will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Ask congregation to please stand. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Andrew and Christopher in their life in Christ? Amen. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, will you persevere in resisting evil? Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people 
and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for Andrew or Christopher who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. This time I'd like to invite any children that are present to come and hang out on the rug. Is that the... Hang out on the rug, please. Sit on the steps too if you need to. They just keep coming. already preaching a sermon. <laughs> Our service continues now with the thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. Also Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you almighty God for the gift of water. Over it the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Name this child. Andrew Lewis. Andrew Lewis. Hey. Sorry about this, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew Lewis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You were great. Awesome, awesome job. It was great. Yeah. Okay, buddy. They don't look too bad, do they? Andrew Lewis, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> 
You were wonderful. Sorry about that. Christopher Silas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christopher Silas, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked as Christ's stone forever. Amen. Amen. Do we carry now or do we? After the invitation? Or, okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin have raised them to a new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will to persevere, a spirit to know you and to love you, and a gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Peace or carry. Okay. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Great pleasure to welcome you to St. James's today, especially if you're a guest or a newcomer. Just a reminder, um, there are name tags in our narthox, narthex as well as welcome packets, so please grab that information, introduce yourselves to the clergy or the ushers or someone wearing a name tag that looks official, and we'll welcome you and tell you more about our life here at St. James's. Um, but just a quick word of thanks to our hospitality committees and all those who contributed to Last Sunday's celebration, uh, Cynthia and the girls and I had a wonderful time uh, kicking off our first Sunday after lots of anticipation, and it was wonderful to be with you all. And I am, I'm grateful to everybody, and I'm not going to try to list any names here, but just everybody who contributed and made it such a very special and meaningful time for all of us. So uh, God bless you and thank you. Um, do read your Sunday chimes carefully. There are lots of wonderful announcements in it about things that are going on at our church. It's a very busy place, as they say, doers of the word, as it, as it says above me, and there are lots of doers here. We do kick off our Sunday school today, Sunday school classes, Sunday school open house. You can find your classroom, meet your teacher, their are locations in the chimes. Uh, youth groups, 6th to 12th grade, are meeting on the third floor of Mishu House, 
forum for adults. I'll be speaking in the church sanctuary, following all the pictures of uh, baptismal candidates and such. So, uh, Bible study will, with Tom Blair will resume in October, so uh, that will be back. Uh, there's a wonderful parish picnic this Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock at Rock Bottom. There are directions on how to get there. I've never been to Rock Bottom, but I'm looking forward to finding it this afternoon. So um, please do come out, join us. It should be a great time with bluegrass and barbecue and a lot of celebration. Um, next Sunday, we're having our servant ministry celebration between our 9 and 11 15 service. It's an opportunity for you to find out about all the wonderful servant ministries uh, from the people who are serving others and giving of themselves. So please do come out for that. Even song by our parish choir next Sunday, September 24th at 5 p.m. And it also is still not too late to join our Pilgrim's Path class, which is kind of our newcomer incorporation process. Um, it meets usually on Wednesdays, but we aren't meeting this Wednesday because of Rosh Hashanah. So uh, read your chimes and you'll get more information and contact the church office. Um, please take note for 6th and 12th graders of our church, we are having acolyte and crucifer training on October 9th, October 9th. Please take note of that. Also, um, I'm excited, and I'm sure many of you are as well, for our upcoming parish retreat. October 20 to 22nd, uh, we'll be there, and there are still rooms available, so please come out, take part. It should be great, a great gathering of the St. James's family. Um, there's also more information about hurricane relief, ways you can help those who've been affected by the terrible recent hurricanes. Also, as I said last week, our stewardship campaign is off and running, and our peer-to-peer -peer initiative is uh, proving to be a big success, but um, please do uh, get your pledge cards in. Uh, we need your support. It's vital to our mission and ministry here at St. James's. And my thanks again to all those who have taken on uh, the responsibility of calling those uh, to encourage them to give to our efforts here at St. James's. Again, um, there's way too much going on here for me to go through this morning, but as I said last week, the only thing missing from any of our activities here this morning is you. So please do join up. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our Holy Eucharist is offered this morning to the glory of God, and as we stand before God's altar and lift up our prayers and our thanksgivings, we remember those who are ill. We remember especially Mia Adams, Elizabeth Austin, Crystal Gain, Anne Garot, Sam Gumpton, Beverly Klein, Future Lewis, Eleanor Lynch, David Matthews, Rosalind McCard, Eve McRae, Michael Mercer, Michael Pratt, Ginny and Adam Rose and family, Pat Sibley, Nancy Sled, Wheezy Stewart, and Isi Will Isis Williams. We continue to pray for those affected by the hurricanes Harvey and Irma and the earthquake in Mexico. We give thanks for the marriage yesterday of Laura Wallace and Will McGugan. We give thanks for the births of Etta Jean Johnson, daughter of Whitney and Joel, granddaughter of Mimi and Dave Johnson, and of Eve Ingrid Foster Edwards, daughter of Whitney and Chris Edwards. We give thanks today as those celebrate birthdays. We remember especially in our prayers and give thanks for Russell Lawson, Ada Poshner, Debbie Ratzberger, M Mason Pilcher, Madison Ratliff, Will Turner, Jocelyn Wilkersham, Molly Yeager, Eliza Hoke, Burns Scott Lewis, and all those who celebrate birthdays this day. And remember those departed this life in thy faith and fear, remembering especially Cornelius de Wolf, and those who died recently, Ray Mercer Paul, Adele Pitt, Robert H. Pitt, Robert and Adele Pitt Leach, and Ray Mercer Paul III, in whose memory our flowers on the altar this morning are given. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, 
being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, James, St. James, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
At this time, if you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or a special occasion, we'd like our prayers, you're invited to come forward to the altar rail at this time. Birthday. It is. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and always as you celebrate your birthday this day. Amen. God bless you. Our service continues now with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, the things which you both learned, received, and saw in this place these things do, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.